honorable guiding lights of academia, scholars of excellence, distinguished fellows, budding scholars, and all the respected guests, I, Kriti Tripathi, welcome all of you in this first working session of the International Conference on Integral Humanism, Perspectives of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay and Jack Maritan. The theme of this first working session is Social Dimensions of Integral Humanism. And before we formally begin the session, I request Chair of this session, Professor Tej Pratap Singh, Coordinator Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay Chair, Honorable Speaker, Archbishop Dr. Felix Mikado, Bishop of Versailles, India, and Honorable Speaker, Professor Shri Prakash Singh, Director, South Campus, University of Delhi, to please come on the dais. Please give a big round of applause. As we all know that the chair of the session is Professor Tej Pratap Singh. And when we talk about introduction of Professor Tej Pratap Singh, we know that he does not need any introduction, but we have to make the formalities. So I'll only say that when we say international relations and talk about international theory, we talk about Professor Tej Pratap Singh. He, this is the intellectual strength of the sir. And administratively, the ability of sir could be understood by the fact that after sir took the position of coordinator of this Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay Chair, he has successfully organized more than 10 to 12 lectures in a very short span of time. And he has also, uh, he's also organizing the conference of this status. So give a big round of applause for chair of the session, Professor Tej Pratap Singh. One of honorable speaker of the session is Archbishop Dr. Felix Mercado. Presently, he is Bishop of Versailles, India, and he had been faculty of Hosra University, USA. He has taught Indian philosophy, systematic dogmatic theology in St. Pius College. He has also taught Christianity at KJ Somaya Bharti Sanskrit Peetham, Mumbai. Numerous articles in various Indian and foreign journals of philosophy and theology in various languages, such as Marathi, English, French, are to his credit. Please welcome our honorable speaker. One of our honorable speaker. One of the dignitaries present on the dais is Professor Shri Prakash Singh. Currently, sir is serving as the director of South Campus University of Delhi. He has previously served as the chair Prof Chair Professor for Dr. Ambedkar Chair in Social Justice, Indian Institute of Public Administration, New Delhi. With the teaching experience of more than 30 years, he has several books and other academic publications to his credit. Sir, we welcome you. Please give a big round of applause. Now, I request Mr. Combe Carpentier D. Gordon, Distinguished Fellow, India Foundation, to facilitate chair of the session, Professor Tej Pratap Singh, coordinator. Pandit Deen Dayal Padhya chair, please give a big round of applause. <laughs> Sir, please come. Sir, Sir, please. Everything should be in system. Thank you so much, sir, for this. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Abhay Kumar to felicitate Archbishop Dr. Felix Makado, Bishop of Versailles. I request students to please assist, sir. This facilitation is the mark of respect and the mark of love to all the dignitaries we have on the dais. <coughs> okay. 
Now moving forward, I would like to invite Professor Timothy Samuel Shah, Distinguished Research, Scholars in, Research Scholar in Politics, University of Dallas. <laughs> I request Professor Timothy Samuel Shah, Distinguished Scholar, Research Scholar in Politics, University of Dallas, to felicitate our honorable speaker, Professor Shri Prakash Singh, Director, South Campus, University of Delhi. <laughs> the warmth of friendship could be captured in the photographs. Thank you so much, sir. Now, after this formal, after these formalities, I would like to uh, I request chair of the session, Professor Tej Pratap Singh, to kindly preside. Uh, kindly preside this working session, which is themed around social dimension of integral humanism. Over to Professor Tej Pratap Singh. Thank you. Thank you, Kriti. Respected uh, resource person on the desk, respected uh, professors, Delegates, students. This is the first uh, technical session because before this, all we are the plenary session. And this uh, session has been titled Social Dimensions of Integral Humanism. So, here in this session, we will be focusing on social aspect of integral humanism. <coughs> and we will, and here again, we will take into account the ideas of Pandit Dindal Upadhyaji and Jack Maritain. Uh, there are similarities, definitely. But along with similarities, there are dissimilarities also. Yeah. How can you expect similarities in the views of two uh, thinkers who are the product of different social, political, economic system? Yeah. As a student, I have read that Machiavelli is the child of his age. And uh, in the same way, this uh, Jacques Martin as well as Pandit Dindal Upadhyayaji, both are child of their age, their time, their place, space, everything here. Yeah. So when their context is different, so how their ideas can be similar? In fact, divergences are more, convergences are very little. It's uh, we who have focused only on the convergences and we have almost ignored the divergences. So a lot of differences are there because their social, political, economic context is different. Uh, communities are there, definitely both are talking about the integral humanism. In fact, it was Jack Martin who used the first time this uh, integral humanism. So in that way, he's a producer of Pandit Dindyal Upadhyayaji. But then, then again, we can't question the originality of Pandit Dindyal Upadhyayaji. And I'm not knowing whether uh, some critics, some commentators have said that probably Dindyalji was aware of his uh, theory of integral humanism. But my feeling is that probably he was not knowing because uh, he sourced his uh, uh, ideas from Vedantic philosophy. And uh, his source is uh, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, Aristotle, others here. And uh, in the same way, we can say that Plato talks about justice here. Yeah. And the Platonic concept of justice is similar to our Varna system here. Yeah. So Manu's, uh, Manu's views on Varna system here. Yeah. So if you say that Plato has learned from Manu, or Manu has borrowed from Plato, it, it is not acceptable. In the same way, we can say that both the thinkers have developed their ideas, developed their philosophy, independently of each other, yeah. And even if they are aware, even if Pandit Dindyal Padhyaji was aware of his writing, so this uh, uh, impact would not have been much. He talks about this, uh, the integration, because the, in the philosophy of both these scholars, the integration is there. So he talks about the integration of individual, society, universe, and almighty, yeah. that in Hindi he has written the Vyasti, Samasti, Srishti, and Parmeshti, yeah. 
So the, this is the uh, integration of these four. So there's an organic unity in all these things. So they can't be separated. They can't be understood. They can't be explained in a uh, separate way. So, so we have to uh, explain them. We have to understand them uh, in an integrated manner. In the same way, the society, polity, economy, culture, value system, all are integrated with each other. Yeah? So we can't isolate one with the uh, with other. Yeah? Uh, then again, this uh, uh, Varna system, the Varna system talks about the Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, uh, the Sudras, Vaisyas, etc. So there is an organic unity here. All are closely related with each other. Yeah? The caste system is the distortion. Yeah? Uh, so in the Varna system, there is no question of inferior, superior. Everybody has been assigned their duty and they are performing their duty. So every work is required for the sustenance of the society. Yeah? So the question of this, uh, this Brahmins are superior, Sudras are inferior, etc., and that has come into the caste system. Uh, to me, it seems in the Varna, whatever role has been assigned, every role is important for the proper functioning of this uh, society. So uh, there is an organic unity, there is integration in it. And on this integration, uh, the Pandit Din Dhyal Upadhyaya focuses. The Sanatan Dharma talks about here. So in Sanatan Dharma, there is a focus on these things. There are all the uh, uh, varnas of the social system. They are closely, there is an interdependence. They are intertwined. They can't be separated. Yeah. Though there is a distinct distinction is there. They are distinct group. They are distinct word. But functionally, are, are in interdependent on each other. As we teach in political science in the social system, that in the system, the set of elements, where all elements are closely interconnected with each other. Yeah. So the, the same kind of interconnection exists here. Yeah. Uh, then uh, finally, we have the two eminent uh, speakers who will be speaking on uh, this uh, social aspect of uh, uh, or this uh, 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 integral humanism. Finally, the, uh, uh, this, uh, this Sarodai and Antodai, this uh, 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 Deen Dhyal talks about the Sarodai and Antodai. So Sarodai and Antodai is the public policy here. Yeah. It, both Jackis Ma uh, Meritain and both Deen Dhyal Upadhyay talk, about, they are more concerned about the poorest among the poor. Antodai, the people who are at the lowest level of the society. Yeah. And uh, they, talk about the sarvo, the, imp the improvement of all, yeah. as we say that, pulling out from the below poverty line. Yeah. So with this, all these, uh, we have the two very capable, eminent uh, uh, scholars. Uh, my friend, uh, Sri Prakash Singh Ji, he has done his PhD on integral humanism. So I don't think there is any uh, better person to speak on the Indi Alupadhyaji than my friend, Professor Sri Prakash Singh. And then we have uh, 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 Archbishop Dr. Felix Machado, Bishop of Asa India. So he will be, I presume, focusing more on uh, Jackass Meritain's uh, views on so this uh, social dimensions of integral humanism. So with these two, we will have a full uh, discussion, full presentation on the social aspect of integral humanism, one in the contest of India, another probably in the contest of Europe as well as India, because he's the archbishop in India, not in Europe. Yeah. So I will invite uh, the uh, first speaker, archbishop. Uh, so sir, 20 minutes time. Yeah, so 20 minutes time to both the uh, uh, scholars, so that we can have sufficient time for discussions also. So over to you, archbishop. You can speak from there if you are comfortable, or you can come over here. It's up to you. Namaskar. Namaskar to everyone here. All who are on the dais, all who are sitting in the hall here. Dear friends, I consider this a distinct privilege to be part of this August gathering, and I wish to thank the organizers, India Foundation and Pandit Dindayal Upadhyay Chair at the prestigious Banaras Hindu University. 
as the concept note suggests, both thinkers, Pandit Dindayal and Jack Marita, offer valuable insights into the promotion of human dignity, ethical governance, and the integration of material and spiritual dimensions in the pursuit of a just society. As said by Professor Pratap Singh, as Catholic, I wish to underline the integral humanism proposed by Jacques Marita, which in many ways concurs the profound thought of Pandit Dindayal Upadhyay. And so uh, I would not touch upon all that I have prepared because since yesterday, again and again, we have been focusing on these two great thinkers, philosophical thinkers. The human person, who is he? Who is she, the human person? For Marita, following St. Thomas Aquinas, the person is not a mere object, a thing that is merely acted upon. Rather, a perfect, a person is a subject a being that is an agent, a thinking and acting agent. A human person is able to act to achieve his own purposes, his own fulfillment and happiness. In that sense, Marita's philosophy represents a kind of radical personalism because it puts the person at the center but the person is not an isolated individual. She, he is individual, but not an isolated individual in the way conceived. For example, in the modern liberal social theories of Thomas Hobbes and John Locke. It is not that material individuality does not exist in Maritain's view. It is that the human person in her, in his richness, should not be reduced to, that, to this dimension of material individuality. Of great significance for our purpose is that Marita, in his attention to the multiple dimensions of the human person, goes out of his way to stress the similarity of his philosophical anthropology to that of Hinduism and indeed to the intellectual heritage of humanity. As he says, the distinction between the ego and self, I don't want to distract myself because I'm a professor and at times I get carried because I'm full of the Indian tradition. And I don't want to dwell too much on that aspect right here because of also the time limit. The human person is not absolute. That is also Jacques Maritain's uh, philosophy. In Jacques Maritain's social philosophy of integral humanism, the human person is conceived of in higher and more multidimensional and thus more complete and integral terms than it is in the philosophy of Western liberalism. The entire person is relative to the absolute, this is Jacques Maritain who says, I quote him, the entire person is relative to the absolute in which alone it can find its fulfillment. The human person not only resembles God in a proper and peculiar fashion, it is the image of God. For God is spirit, and the person proceeds from him, having as its principle of life a spiritual soul, a spirit capable of knowing and loving and of being elevated by grace to participate in the very life of God, so as to finally love him and know him, even as God knows and loves himself. Jacques Maritain's view uh, 
the human uh, views human person not only as coming from god human being coming from god exitus but also as returning to god reditus we are therefore made not for isolation human persons are made for communion i am moving into the topic given to me the social dimension that is why we are given souls and spirits we are given reason and will so that we can freely enter a loving relationship with our creator a relationship in which we can understand and be conscious of god's nature and goodness and respond freely to his love not as robots but as subjects our dignified independence as persons our self possession is for the sake of enabling true self giving and thus true communion we are called to be self giving beings and that is where that is how it takes us to true communion in order to be able to give oneself one must first exist and one must not only exist as other things one must exist in an eminent way by possessing oneself by holding oneself in hand and by disposing of oneself that is one must exist through a spiritual existence capable of enveloping itself by intelligence and freedom and of super existing in knowledge and free love marita conceives of the human person as possess possessing by nature a capacity orientation and purpose that transcend the merely human and that is evident in the definition he gives of true humanism and such a definition tends essentially to make man more truly human and to manifest his original dignity by enabling her him to participate in everything which can enrich him in nature and history i would like to then move to say that the integral humanism proposed by jacques maritain has supernatural uh dimension at that it is worthy of the lofty dignity of the human person as maritain observes and i quote such a humanism is an integral and progressive christian position i come to the final point emphasizing the theme the social nature of the human person the nature of human being is social as aristotle has defined human being as rational and there are so many other definitions but one definition of human person is also that we are social uh, beings maritain's integral humanism is inherently social in that he views the human person as dis- destined for communion not only with god communion with god but also with other human persons and because human persons are not merely materialistic but spiritual creatures who also have spiritual ends or purposes and not merely material passions and in- interests they can pursue shared goods and purposes a truly common good with other human persons marita observes and why does the human person demand for himself life in society yes we all want to be part of society and why because first by virtue of the very perfection which are inherent in us and because of the fact of this being open to the communications of knowledge and of love and which request require an ent- en- uh, an entrance into relations with other persons it is because of his needs her needs of the human person that we must be part of society we want to be part of society taken in the aspect of his indigence he demands to be integrated to a body of social communications 
without which it is impossible for him to attain to his full life and achievement. Third, in order to attain to a certain degree of elevation in knowledge and perfection of moral life, man needs the education, seeks to develop with the help of education through the teaching and the cooperation of other men and women and because society is thus, uh, society is thus required to accomplish human dignity. Fourth, it is also important to see that Maritain's philosophy of integral humanism is nonetheless social in a way that prevents any human person from being conceived or used as a mere means or instrument of the political community. In Maritain's integral humanism, because every human person is a being with an inherent spiritual dignity and an infinite spiritual end or purpose, he or she has a nature and a purpose that transcends any finite human community, including the political community, as great and noble and important as the political community may be. No human person can be reduced to being a mere cog in the wheel of a political or economic system. As Marita notes with great force in a characteristic passage, and I quote, it is to the perfect achievement of the person and of its super, supra-temporal aspirations that society itself and its common good are subordinated as to the end of another order which transcends them, unquote. And Jack Marita continues, and I quote again, a single human soul is of more worth than the whole universe of bodies and material goods. There is nothing above the human soul except God. Regarding the eternal destiny of the soul and its supra-temporal goods, society exists for each person and is subordinated to it. A bit later, uh, Marita sharpens the point deploying the idea that certain primordial rights belong to the human person as such and must never be violated. Man is constituted as person made for God and for eternal life before being constituted part of a human community and he is constituted or she is constituted part of familial society before being constituted part of political society. Fifth, though Marita Maritain's integral humanism has an important and in fact irreducible spiritual foundation and orientation. It is also animated by a strong respect for the irreducib irreducibly material and physical dimension of the human person and of human society. True humanism for Marita is not a platonic or Cartesian dualism that separates the soul from the body or mind from matter in order to uh, elevate the spiritual at the expense of the material. God, who is spirit, fully and completely assumed the nature of a flesh and blood human being in the person of Jesus Christ. By assuming a fully human form, God elevated and ennobled the matter and the flesh of our human material existence. Sixth, the fact that Marita's integral humanism is a non-dualism, dualist, or anti-dualist uh, humanism that radically elevates as well as integrates both the spiritual and the material dimensions of human existence has direct and huge implications for politics. It means that no healthy politics can ignore or disrespect the spiritual dimension and the spiritual end or aspirations of the human person. But it also means that no healthy politics can ignore or disrespect the material dimension of the human person and of human society. And Marita writes with great power and clarity about the social significance of this kind of integrated and non-dualist humanity. 
a characteristic of the human the, of the humanism which i call integral this is i'm quoting marita why does he call it integral humanism far from being limited to the elite it would care for it for the masses for their right to work and to a spiritual life and for the movement which brings them we may say to an historically full age on the social significance of such a humanism i will simply say that in my opinion it should assume the task of radically transforming the temporal order a task which would tend to substitute for bourgeois civilization and for an economic system based on the fecundity of money not a collective collectivistic economy but a personalistic civilization and a personalistic economy through which would stream a temporal refraction of the truths of the gospel marita continues this task is joined to a thorough awakening of the religious conscience and i wish to insist for a moment on this point one of the worst vices of the modern world is its dualism the dissociation between the things of god and the things of the world the latter the things of the social economic and political life have been abandoned to their own carnal view a carnal law on the other hand modern civilization which pays dearly to today for the past seems as it were pushed by the very contradictions and fatalities suffered by it towards contrasting forms of misery and intensified materialism to rise above these fatalities we need an awakening of liberty and of its creative creative forces we need the energies of spiritual and social resurrection of which man or woman does not become capable by the grace of the state or any party pedagogy but by a love which fixes the center of his life her life infinitely above the world and temporal history i'm coming to almost conclude now according to marita no dominant political philosophy or ideology of late modernity whether liberal individualism communism or fascism adequately respects the rights of the human person and the full requirements of an integral humanism as he is sketched she is sketched the, this philosophy out of his work uh, uh, jack marita's uh, philosophy and his work uh, the last point he makes before i just say one word of conclusion the only alternative is some kind of personalist democracy that is neither individualist nor materialist nor anti individualist a kind of third way democracy that eventually emerged in one form in latin america and europe as christian democracy as it was mentioned yesterday discussion of the details of politics political program programs is beyond the scope of this paper and was always largely beyond jack marita's own concerns and interests and beyond uh, as conclusion i would say to the inhuman humanism of the individual would thus succeed a new humanism the integral humanism of the person open to that which surpasses it and leads it to achievement and open to the common service of justice and friendship i will only conclude by saying very strongly that against inhuman humanism and for the sake of realizing in india and elsewhere a truly integral humanism of the person true catholics and true hindus have every reason to be the strongest of allies and to work together intellectually and socially rather than against each other and this wonderful conference 
I personally want to thank uh, Ram Madhav and also Professor Pratap Singh for having organized this with your team and the quality of the gathering here. The questions that come shows that we are few. That's fine, but we are a good quality sitting here. And this wonderful confer conference represents a significant step in the, in the direction of constructive and collaborative direction. Jai Hind. Thank you so much, sir. Exactly 20 minutes, sir. This shows the Catholic discipline here. Yeah. <laughs> so the other things I will not say. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and his concluding was that the, there is nothing contradictory, nothing opposite between the true Hindus and true Catholics, sir. Both are on the same plane. They are, he said they're strong allies. Yeah. So, so there is no antithesis between these two, the true Hindus and uh, true uh, Catholics. And that same logic can be applied to others also. Yeah. Even recently, when the Ram Mandir Pran Pratishtha was going on, the persons whose family contest was the contestant in the court, he himself participated in that. Yeah. So his religion, being a Muslim, did not come in the way in his participation in that uh, re religious ritual of uh, the Ram Temple consecration. Yeah. A very interesting concept he has given, inhuman humanism. Yeah. I was not familiar first time I heard this. Uh, it is, might be because of my limited knowledge. Primarily, I am a student of international <laughs> politics, conflict, peace, etc. This is the new domain I have entered because of my administrative responsibility. Uh, he said that individual is in the center. Yeah. And there is no, again, contradiction between the individualism and collectivism. Yeah. He talks about the third wave, yeah. like third wave democracy. Yeah. He calls it Christian democracy, where there is no uh, this thing. Uh, antithesis between the individual and society, et cetera. The spirit and material, both are related to each other. And he said that single soul is more important than the whole world. So that is the, the best statement about the individualism here, yeah, where the single soul, I just uh, recalling this, Mac, uh, this uh, uh, John Stuart Mill has said over his mind, body, and soul, man is sovereign here. Yeah. So here, every soul matters, and it is more important than the whole world. So there are many things. Uh, we can take the, those things in the question and answer. Uh, firstly, I will prefer to uh, request my other uh, resource person, the other speaker, to make his presentation. And after that, together, we can take the questions. Yeah. So over to Professor Sri Prakash Singh Ji, who is right now holding the administrative position of Director South Campus. He's also a very busy person nowadays. He accepted my invitation, came here. So thank, I'm taking this uh, occasion to thank you also, sir. So over to you, Professor Sri Prakash Singh. Uh, thank you, T.P. Singh ji. A great learning I had from Kasi. Ramasis ji is sitting in audience. Once a person, perhaps T.P. Singh Ji himself was introducing himself to someone, then Ramasis Ji asked him, what's your full name? Then he elaborated Satej Pratap Singh. Since then I have been practicing this to pronounce the full name of each and everyone whosoever comes across to me. Satesh Pratap Singh Ji, thank you so much. My co-panelist, Archbishop Dr. Felix, Professor Chandrakala Fadia Ji, 
प्रोफेसर गोपा कुमार जी प्रोफेसर जयप्रसाद जी प्रोफेसर आर सी सिन्हा साहब कॉम कॉर्पेंटिया फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम इंडिया फाउंडेशन फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स I must thank Sri Ram Madhav ji and Tej Pratap Singh ji having me here for this wonder wonderful seminar. Why I'm saying wonderful seminar because majority of times we miss the theoretical perspectives. Majority of times we miss comparative perspectives. But here. whether the session of shanti sri pandit ji was in previous session and right now deliberation by our friend co panelist dr felix gave a new dimension to it new dimension to the thought process associated with integral humanism my journey begins with integral humanism in 1987 in my mphil days since those days i have been with this subject trying to know what this integral humanism is every time when i read those 68 pages of pandit din dayal upadhyay i find something else beyond our imagination every line of it once i was teaching indian political thought in my class a student of mine came to me and she told me that sir integral humanism is full of communalism i asked her beta from where you have read it can you single out a line in all those 60 as pages which can be identified as a communal one if you can come across that line please let me know tomorrow in the class so i can discuss with you discuss with you second day she came to comes to the class and she was absolutely silent i rather provoked her where is that line friends my submission to you all is please read all four lectures delivered by pandit din dayal in original when you will read those lines then you will find what kind of thought process what kind of thought he has given to the humanity when dr felix was citing many things from uh jack martin i was reminded a book by maharshi arvind it's a beautiful book by him on integral approach in that book he is trying to integrate this humanity with the nature is a a book or a thought process where nature becomes important for this individual and humanity and look at this contemporary practices all over the globe that we all are concerned about the climate and environment our problem have been that we have not been going to those literatures which are in form of treasure with our libraries again i'll request all my friends please read arvin's integral approach that will benefit you immensely and now i'm coming to pandit din dayal upadhyay nd pama a renowned political scientist in a memorial lecture in united states of america in 1978 if you are interested you can read mahesh mehta's book where this 
piece is written and i'm quoting from nd palmer many important leaders fade away after death din dayal upadhyay belong to the class of the truly great who only rise higher and higher after his death just think over it how many politicians how many leaders those who came with certain philosophy could survive certain on slots facing lots of challenges where they are in politics in power in governance but not in academics if i go on calculating only three things comes to my mind this may be over exaggeration or my limited knowledge without into governance without into favor without having any academic backing one is ramayana never taught only taught through the our elders to the generations but that is very much there when siraj gopalachari as first governor general of india was addressing first time to the nation he said i'm not governor general of india it's ram who is governing the nation just you think over it without any academics without any syllabi support without any readings and facing onslaughts even then that survived another quote is mahabharat again same thing happens if two people are are going with each other third person will say mahabharat is going on no one knows how many shlokas are there how many parvs are there what adi parv talks about what one parv talks about what shanti parv talks about when a book from icchr came in india is the mother of democracy number of eyebrows were raised is it right or wrong it's over claim when i went to the content with that creation of icchr i was reminded which they have forgotten to include in it the shanti parva whether it's the anglo saxon empires of britain norman de billiams their wise men council britan council great magnum councilium and curia regis of 5th century 6th century 10th century surprising to the academic world is the shanti parva in shanti parva you will find the whole structure of cabinet forget lichvi forget the sabha forget the magad i'm talking about mahabharat in mahabharat yudhishthir is asking question to bhishma and bhishma is on dying bed even then he is telling what raj dharma is how you can govern how raj dharma raj can be established what may be the means and there he is elaborates about five varna brahmana kshatriya vaisya shudra and sut such a religious literature such a literature of a state craft we made it confined to the treaty of war only is talking about five varna and out of five varna he creates a council for yudhishthir and that council consists of 37 individuals out of 37 4 from brahmin 8 from kshatriya 21 from vaisya 3 from shudra 1 from sut and there he talks about average age average age is 50 years and in ashrama system we have four classifications gurukula varnaprastha 
सॉरी गुरुकुल गृहस्थ वाण प्रस्थान संन्यास एंड लुक एट दिस क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ भीष्म टू युधिष्ठिर इन महाभारत एवरेज एज इज फिफ्टी एंड बिगिनिंग ऑफ वाण प्रस्थ देर इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रॉम एनी इंडिविजुअल दैट यू आर एब टू योर फैमिली यू बिकम मैन ऑफ सोसाइटी एंड वेन पंडित दीनदयाल उपाध्याय relates that individual from vesti to samasti that is the age that individual becomes the part of society there din dayal upadhyay is different to others and all knowledge it's not the creation of pandit din dayal self it's a basically the knowledge of antiquity since the ages when i'm one quote from Warren Hastings comes to my mind. That is of 1772, prior to regulating it. Warren Hastings, it's uh, Robert Metcalf who has written on uh, strategies of the Raj in four volume published by Cambridge. In that book, its introduction only, Warren Hastings says that if you wish to govern this country. Govern with their civilizational values and ethos, which are antiquity from the ages. Look at the colonizers, what they were discussing and what we did after independence to our academics and our education. Professor Gopal Kumar Sahib was rightly pointing out while Santi Sri was speaking. Ki where. our spiritual values went off in audience i was sitting and the answer to my mind was coming it's our academic zone it's our the academy since those who are responsible for it indian polity sampurnanand malviya bal gangadhar tilak you read them you'll find their teachings full of spiritual values and those spiritual values just fades away late 60s and new values from west came to in no doubt as gandhi ji rightly pointed out open your doors and windows so that thoughts come from outside but be careful that wind should not blow you out of the room that should be the spirit of our practices and when i try to relate that spiritual value with pandit din dayal upadhyay his ekatmanovad or integral humanism he talks about the four purushartha dharma arth kama moksha and the beauty of these four purushartha is prior to even in arth shastra Kautilya talks टॉक्स अबाउट त्रय पुरुषार्थ ओनली नॉट मोक्ष लुक एट द ब्यूटी ऑफ द लिटरेचर कौटिल्य इज टॉकिंग अबाउट ओनली थ्री पुरुषार्थ मोक्ष इज नॉट देर मोक्ष इज एवल्यूशन ऑफ द सोसाइटी एंड एसर्सन ऑफ द सोसाइटी टू द इंडिविजुअल सो दैट ही कुड नॉट डिविएट फ्रॉम द राइट पाथ एंड धर्म इज नॉट एट ऑल अ रिलीजियस प्रैक्टिस देयर here again din dayal upadhyay in his integral humanism is different to others no doubt jack martin talks about individuality an individual not in isolation but he ends up with catholicism and you cannot attribute such faith to pandit din dayal upadhyay because pandit din dayal upadhyay is very much clear his opinion that his thought process is for everyone in the society definitely when he was discussing with the society that was indian society when we look at pandit din dayal upadhyay in totality we find that his thought process is different and for whole humanity without any prejudice or without any assertion for any belief systems 
to limit myself i am coming back to some theoretical aspects given by pandit din dulpadhyay pertaining to individual society and the practices initiated by pandit din dayal upadhyay himself sarve bhavant sukhina sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadran pashyantu ma kasya dukh bhag bhavet this one is the spirit of pandit din dayal upadhyay where he says may all be happy may all enjoy health may all come by prosperity let none have misfortune for his lot integral humanism being the ap 20th century articulation of upanishadic vision places before us the same type of dreams we aim at the progress and happiness of man the integral man how this integral man he clarifies or justifies in 1964 when he first time comes with this idea to a smaller group later on in bharatiya jan sangh's training program in 65 in vijayawada and mumbai at that point of time prevailing ideologies were capitalism and marxism and pandit din dayal upadhyay rejects both while rejecting these two ideologies and its practices he emphasizes the exploitative regimes inherited with these policies i won't justify the indian society at that point of time that indian society was very good everything was golden in that period of time i won't say that i won't claim that but there pandit din dayal upadhyay is coming with a thought process where he wish to teach the society to train the society to change their thought process so that everyone in society is treated equally not by society everyone is start treating equally and there he says that when we look at marxism individual becomes a unit only and in that unit society comes later in that unit state becomes prominent and in that state practice dictatorship of proletariat when it's a dictatorship by proletariat that means human rights human values of certain classes are violated and when system becomes state centric then it's all dictatorship people and academics have been advocating the marxism but they have been sighing away from posing the responsibility to the system those who have been running this political system and when guru golwalkar ji said that the age of this marxism in its sar will be only of 75 year i don't know how he was calculating this exact 75 years that ussr was declined and same applies to lizer's fair theory of capitalism look at the theory no doubt they have history of more than 400 years almost 435 years if i calculate they started with lizer's fair theory where individual becomes more important to the society then positivism comes in positive capitalism capitalism or liberalism comes in then new school of in form of new right robert nozick and others comes in and clearly he says that individualism but not lizer's fair it's again an archaic in nature when you give predominance to the individual without a governance then it's an archaic and what pandit din dayal upadhyay tells to the society state should be as a guardian 
It's not necessary evil. It's not necessary evil, not at all. A state should act as a guardian. But to that guardian who will teach, who will govern, who will control, that is of society. And society is inclusive of all individuals, those who are connected with each other. They are not in form of unit. It's an individual, then family, then groups, then society, social orders, and state. And lately, society and state intertwines with each other and becomes part of each other. Majority of times in political science, we are taught and we do discuss with our students also, we write also, that in Western world, the beauty went with Greek political thought because they were clearly establishing the society and state. You read our literature, our society, and our belongingness, you, will, you won't find this distinction. That's why we had Arth Shastra. We didn't have the politics. And in Arth Shastra, friends, read carefully if you have not read yet. Don't go with the railway stations, books of Chanakiniti. Please purchase original written by P.V. Kane and others. Samaya Sastri. Translation is available. Perhaps that literature is one who talks about the methodology. How this script is written. How this was created. Inductive and deductive method. Which Plato started using in his Republic, that one is used by Cortilla in Arthasastra. And in his own Arthasastra, he talks about 11 other Arthasastra, and references are very much there. Unfortunately, those literatures are not available with us. But you cannot deny the contribution of our Shrutis and Srabhya traditions. That way, our literary contributions are immense. When I was quoting Sarve Bhant Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya, at that point of time, Professor Singh, you can remind me my time, then I'll stop. It's over. Actually, I'll, I'll take this instance only and we'll conclude. Uh, I know nothing about integral hemorrhism, but I try to read and try to grasp something out of it. And whatever I could understand, I am just dwelling with you. When I was going with this Sarve Bhant Sukhina, Bentham came to my mind. And Bentham talks about pain and pleasure. And he said, there are two masters who control the individual sense of social life. And that one is pain and pleasure. But Pandit Dindyal Upadhyayas Articulation of pain and pleasure is different to Hobbes and Mill. And he talks about the happiness of the soul and the fulfillment of fourfold aspirations related to body, mind, intellect, and soul is predicated on sensuous pleasure, mental satisfaction, peace, and knowledge and realization of self. Uh, the last, what self is? Upanishadic tradition talks about ko aham, who am, who am I? And answers it when we transform this I into we, ko vayam, then our journey is complete. When this individual becomes man of society, then journey of this individual concludes in a positive note. And that one is one of the aspects of Pandit Deen Dhyalopadhyay, which I shared with you. There are a number of, number of phases, number of dimensions in Pandit Deen Dhyalopadhyay. For example, these days, UP government in leadership of Yogi ji is 
giving a con economic concept in form of one district and one product. Friends, in 1951, in Kanpur, sorry, 53, in Kanpur, Pandit Dindyal Upadhyay, a general secretary of party, gave a unique idea of one product, one family. One family, one product. You look at your villages, those who belong to the villages, just try to find out the answer there. You will find the answer very much there in the village itself. If you need something associated with iron or associated with anything, you go to carpenter. Not everyone. You For that, you don't go to the Brahmins. If you need something for the social customary regions, then you go to the Brahmins. For justice, there is a system of the panchayats. In village itself, if you go to the productivity, that one is Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay. He sensed the society in a manner that he wanted to have a family-like system where village should become the core concern. Many things can be said, but I'll stop here. Thank you so much, Tez Pratap Ji. Thank you so much, Sir Prakash Ji. You have not taken much time, only five minutes, sister. But uh, you are a, such a, a speaker that when you speak, the audience are spellbound. Yeah. Even the, just I was also listening to you, I did not look at the watch. When you asked me, but the time has been left, then I saw the watch, then I found that it's already over. Yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, his conclusion, it, many times I have heard him speaking on different topics. Ambedkar, he speaks brilliantly, Pandit Dindyal Upadhyay Ji. He's such a, uh, a speaker, a wonderful speaker. The one family, one product, one product, one family reminded me the theory of comparative advantage in economics. Yeah. So the village is an organic uh, community where every family is connected with others, doing different kind of service. Some is lohar, some is badhai, some is nai, some is dobi. But all together, they are integrated with each other. So that was the vision of Pandi. He was also the uh, great exponent of decentralization. Yeah. So Yogi is also, but even in the Vixit Bharat also, I think his ideas has also been integrated into that. Uh, and uh, the Pandit ji rejects all the views, whether it is the atomistic view of the society, as uh, Sri Prakash ji was saying, collectivist view of the society. I will add this class view of the society also, yeah. the class divided society. He emphasized the importance of Mahabharat. Yes, I have heard that many people say they don't keep Mahabharat in your ho home. Probably some quarrel will happen. Eh? <laughs> so, yeah, and something goes on. So people say Mahabharat shuru ho gaya. So, <laughs> so that is the kind of opinion, the kind of narrative has been built about our uh, classical uh, test and. Uh, Lot of things are there in Ramayana, Mahabharata, particularly Santi Parva, he is singled out. Uh, so now things are changing. Indian knowledge system is uh, now being discussed, now being promoted, now things are changing. So probably, and if Sri Prakash himself, Madam, uh, also many people are involved in the reframing of the curriculum, and probably the test like Mahabharata, Ramayana, etc., which were excluded from our. Uh, education system, so now these are coming and going to occupy the center stage. Uh, with this, uh, I will request uh, uh, Dr. Com Corpentier D. Gordon, the Distinguished Fellow of India Foundation, to felicitate uh, our two speakers with the souvenirs here.
with this with this we are coming to an end of this session thank you both the panelists it was really a great pleasure to listen both of you and uh, rarely we get the opportunity to chair this kind of session so thank you to both of the panelists